ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय 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 नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यासम नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशो भद्रेशो भगवती उत्तम श्लोके नष्टी नष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चुमाराय कुमाराय नमो नम नमो नम नम ओं विष्णु कृष्ण कृष्णाय भूतय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी विचारिणे विचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यारिणे ओम अज्ञान मृद ज्ञानंजना शलाठ चक्षुरुन्मृत तस्म श्री गुरु सो रीडिंग श्रीमद भागवतम फर्स्ट चैप फर्स्ट कैंटो एट्थ चैप्टर फर्स्ट श्लोका सो एनी बडी वुड लाइक टू रिसाइड द संस्कृत आई कैन ट्राई प्रभु जी जस्ट वांट यू गो हेड सूत उवाच सूत उवाच अथ ते सम अथ ते संप्रे संपरेतानाम अथ ते संपरेतानाम स्वानाम उदाकम इच्छताम स्वानाम उदाकम इच्छताम दातुम स कृष्णा गंगायाम दातुम स कृष्णा गंगायाम पुरस्कृत्य ययुस स्त्रिय पुरस्कृत्य ययुस स्त्रिय ट्रांसलेशन Sooth Goswami said, "Thereafter, the Pandavas, desiring to deliver water to the dead relatives who had desired it, went to the Ganges with Draupadi. The ladies walked in front. Purport: To date, it is the custom in Hindu society to go to the Ganges or any other sacred river to take bath when death occurs in the family. Each of the family members pours out a potful of." the ganges water for the departed soul and walks in a procession uh, with the ladies in the front the pandavas also followed the rules more than 5000 years ago lord krishna being a cousin of the pandavas was also amongst the family members hari krishna Hare Krishna. So, anybody would like to share anything on this? Okay, we'll go forward. Would like to read the Sanskrit? Okay, I'll read. Te ni ni yoda kam sarve. Te ni ni yoda kam sarve. Vila. आप्लुता हरी पादाम चा। आप्लुता हरी पादाम पादाम चा। रज पूत सरीज जले रज रज पूत सरीज जले Translation: Having lamented over them and sufficiently offered Ganges water, they bathed in the Ganges, whose water is sanctified due to being mixed with the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> so, how is the water of Ganges mixed with the lotus feet of the dust of the Lord? वो जो वामन अवतार ने वो जब स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड ने वो पोल कर दिया था तो गैंजीज फ्लो हुए थे 
Yeah, so everybody knows that past time? No, I don't know. So, Raksha Madhaji can please elaborate so that everybody knows. Ji, Prabhuji, I'm going to try to correct me. I'll make mistakes. Uh, so, when uh, uh, Vaman, uh, Vaman Bhagwan came uh, and he was uh, asking uh, Bali Maharaj ke unko three steps of land chahiye. and when he said that you can take it, then his first step was to the whole planetary system, the second step was to the whole universe. Pe. So when he put his hand to the universe, to cover the universe, then his toes were universe ki jo layer hai wo puncture ho gayi thi and then the flow of ganges river came at that time and isliye phir shiv ji ne unko apni jataon mein liya tha because we material people could not take that to unhone unko control tarike se uh, planet pe aane diya tha and the third step mein to aapko pata hai ki wo bali maharaj ne surrender kar diya tha apne aap ko ki mere sar pe rakh lijiye tha prabhu ji correct kar dijiye maine kuch galti ki hai thank you mataji you explained very nicely so <clears throat> with the two steps of Vamandev who became three Vikram, two steps of three Vikram, the whole possession of Bali Maharaj, practically the whole universe was taken away. And in fact, the outer covering of the layer of the universe was also pierced by the toe and few drops of um, water came out, which is from the uh, from the Karna Ocean, from the Kalsal Ocean. And that is <clears throat> what is Mother Ganges. So <clears throat> those few drops were strong enough to drown the whole <clears throat> universe. And then Lord Shiva, he took it and made the flow to be regulated. And then later on, uh, King Bhagirath <clears throat> requested Mother Ganges to come to the earth. And that was the whole past time. So thank you, Mataji. So that's why Mother Ganges is so pure. Okay, who would like to read this third shloka? Sanskrit. I okay. can try Prabhu. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mother. Tatrasinam Kurupatim. Tatrasinam Kurupatim. Dritra Rashtram Sahanujam. Dritra Rashtram Sahanujam. Sandharim Putra Shokartam. Sandharim Putra Shokartam. Pritham Krishnam Chamadhava. Pritham Krishnam Chamadhava. Translation. The, there sat the king of the Kurus, Maharaj Yudhishthira, along with his younger brothers and Chitrashtra. Gandhari Kunti and Draupadi, all overwhelmed with grief, Lord Krishna was also there. Parpat. The battle of Kurukshetra was fought between family members. And thus all affected persons were also family members. Like Maharaj Yudhishthira and brothers. Kunti, Draupadi, Subhadra, Dhritarashtra, Gandhari and her daughters-in-law, etc. All the principal dead bodies were in some way or other related with each other. And therefore the family grief was combined. Lord Krishna was also one of them as a cousin of the Pandavas and nephew of Kunti, as well as brother of Subhadra, etc. The Lord, therefore, was equally sympathetic toward all of them and therefore he began to pacify them befittingly. Hare Krishna. Befittingly. Hare Krishna. Anybody would like to share anything in this? Okay, we'll go forward. Anybody would like to volunteer to read this one? Hare Krishna. 
Translation Citing the stringent laws of the Almighty and their reactions upon living being, Lord Shri Krishna and the Munis began to pacify those who were shocked and affected. Purport. The stringent laws of nature under the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be altered by any living entity. The living entities are eternally under the subjugation of the Almighty Lord. The Lord makes all the laws and orders and these laws and orders are generally called dharma or religion. No one can create any religious formula. Bona fide religion is to abide by the orders of the Lord. The Lord's orders are clearly declared in the Bhagavad Gita. Everyone should follow him only, follow him only or his orders, and that will make all happy, both materially and spiritually. <clears throat> as long as we are in the material world, our duty is to follow the orders of the Lord. And if by the grace of the Lord, we are liberated from the clutches of the material world, then in our liberated stage also, we can render transcendental living service unto the Lord. In our material stage, we can neither ourselves... Uh, sorry, can chala gaya? In the in our material stage, we can neither ourselves nor the Lord for want of spiritual vision. But when we are liberated from material affection and are situated on our original spiritual form, we can see both ourselves and the Lord face to face. Mukti means to be reinstated in one's original spiritual status after giving up the material conception of life. Therefore, human life is specifically meant for qualifying ourselves for this spiritual liberty. Unfortunately, under the influence of illusory material energy, we accept this spotlight of only a few years as a permanent existence and thus become illusioned by possessing so-called country, home, land, children, wife, community, wealth, etc., which are false representations created by Maya or illusion. And under the dictation of Maya, we fight with one another to protect, to protect these false possessions. <clears throat> by cultivating spiritual knowledge, we can realize that we have nothing to do with all this material paraphernalia. Then at once we, we become free from material attachment. This clearance of the misgivings of material existence at once takes place by association with the Lord's devotees who are able to inject the transcendental sound into the depths of the bewildered heart and thus make one practically liberated from all lamentation and illusion. That is a summary of the pacifying measures <clears throat> for those affected by the reaction of stringent material laws exhibited 
in the forms of birth death old age and disease which are insoluble factors of material existence the victims of war namely the family members of the crews were lamenting the problems of death and the lord pacified them on the basis of knowledge <clears throat> here <coughs> first of all <clears throat> it defines dharma dharma is the law created by the almighty lord and not by any human being and all these laws are stated in bhagavad gita and they are stated very clearly in bhagavad gita so everyone should follow the laws given by lord shri krishna in bhagavad gita and that will absolve one from the effects of the deeds done as karma in our material stage we can neither we can see neither ourselves nor the lord for want of spiritual vision this because to know the lord one has to have spiritual vision otherwise we live in a world created by maya which is all illusory and we are all affected by maya and so we are all entangled in our houses countries our relatives and these are all the forms created by maya and since we get entangled in maya our spiritual vision is lost in bhagavad gita god has said that the process of birth disease death aging they are all part of the material bodies the soul is eternal and since the soul is not affected one should not grieve for the material bodies and this is how lord shri krishna tried to console the grieving family members of pandav and kaurav clan so one has to leave the material concept of life and be in the spiritual concept of life and then one will not be affected by the misery is occurring due to our material existence hari krishna i think someone else will be able to elaborate it further and better hari krishna aunty thank you so much for sharing shared very nicely i was reading as i was reading this i was uh, remembering here prabhupad says in the last that is the summary of specifying measures for those affected by the reaction of stringent material laws exhibited in the forms of birth disease old age and death which are insoluble factors of material existence and the victims of the war namely the family members were lamenting <clears throat> the problems of death and lord pacify them on this basis so whenever we see this <laughs> so commonly whenever there is a family or a, a environment where a death happens then people come <clears throat> you know and they sit and they talk about this problem of death they think oh what is that power which takes our loved ones away and so many things just lamenting how this should not have happened 
maybe somehow or the other the person would have got few more days to stay with us and so on and so forth and <clears throat> the vision is very different than uh, the vision of spiritually advanced person the spiritually advanced person he can see how the goal of this particular body is to have spiritual advancement and that's the reason we have all the resources all the relatives all the family members everyone and when that means spiritual purpose is forgotten then the focus is only just to make the life more comfortable and we feel very comfortable by being attached to our sense gratificatory propensities and to be attached to our loved ones and <clears throat> that actually becomes a source of misery than the source of happiness because sooner or later one will have to move on giving up this body it becomes very very difficult actually very problematic very painful and the more we hear the more we see the more we try to uh, stay in that association the more it helps us to remind ourselves otherwise it's so easy to get to forget that this body is just temporary we just have a habit of just trying to some or the other focus on sense gratification the mind will go on things here and there bodily conception and the more we can read we hear we come across we <laughs> come in touch with devotees the more repeatedly we hear the more we get a chance to remind ourselves nahi nahi this is actually uh, <clears throat> more important to engage in the service of the lord because this body can be taken away any time and <clears throat> nobody no power nothing can stop us from <clears throat> from death we are all very fast with the passage of time going towards it but once we <clears throat> change our consciousness and we use this as an opportunity to serve the lord and the devotees we are very fast going towards krishna actually so this is uh, something which will need repeated reminders and that's why we see in shri prabhupada's books he you know he re- keeps repeating it uh, over and over again so that it gets ingrained into our brains and into our consciousness so those are some of the thoughts coming to my my mind i want to share anybody else would like to share anything so like prabhupad here writes unfortunately under the influence of illusory material energy we accept this spot life of only a few years as our permanent existence and thus we become illusioned by possessing so called country home land children wife community wealth etc which are false representations created by maya and under the dictation why we fight with one another to protect these false possessions by cultivating spiritual life we can realize that we have nothing to do with this material paraphernalia so i really like this because uh, uh, the more repeatedly we remind ourselves this the more it becomes uh, helpful to get into this consciousness otherwise this consciousness is very difficult so many lifetimes we have been thinking uh, how to do sense gratification how to enjoy uh, <coughs> opposite sex how to enjoy some nice eatable stuff and uh, now <clears throat> human life we have just got a few years of association or short time of association so changing those habits is not easy 
so but we keep reminding ourselves the scriptures keep reminding ourselves devotees keep reminding ourselves then that helps in getting our consciousness straightened out okay so we'll go to the next shloka anyone wants to share anything before we move forward okay anybody would like to read the sanskrit for this 1.8.5 Hare Krishna Prabhu, I can read. Yes, Prathanan Prabhu, please. Sadhayitva Jata Shatro Swamrajam. Yes, Shatro Shatro Swamrajam Kitavaritam Swamrajam Kitavaritam Gata Yitvasato Ragya Gata Yitvasato Ragya Kachas Parsh Shata Yusha Kachas Parsh Shata Yusha Prabhuji, do you want to read translation? Yes, Prabhuji. Translation. The clever Duryodhan and his party cunningly usurped the kingdom of Yudhishthir, who had no enemy. By the grace of the Lord, the recovery was executed and the unscrupulous kings who joined with Duryodhan were killed by him. Others also died, the duration of life having decreased for the rough handling of the hair of Queen Draupadi. You want me to read the purport as well, Prabhu? Sure, Prabhuji. If you want to share something, you can share anytime. Otherwise, you can keep reading. I think uh, we'll finish the purport. Yeah. Sure, Prabhuji. Purpur. In the glorious days, or before the advent of the age of Kali, the Brahmanas, the cows, the women, the children, and the old men were properly given protection. One, the protection of the Brahmanas maintains the institution of Varn and Ashram, the most scientific culture for attainment of spiritual life. Two, the protection of cows maintains the most miraculous form of food, that is milk, for maintaining the finer tissues of the brain for understanding higher aims of life. Three, the protection of women maintains the chastity of society by which we can get a good generation for peace, tranquility, and progress of life. Four, the protection of children gives the human form of life its best chance to prepare the way of liberty from material bondage. Such protection of children begins from the very day of begetting a child by the purificatory process of Garbhadhan Samskar, the beginning of pure life. Fifth, the protection of the old men gives them a chance to prepare themselves for better life after death. This complete outlook is based on factors leading to successful humanity as against the civilization of polished cats and dogs. The killing of the above mentioned innocent creatures is totally forbidden because even by insulting them, one loses one's duration of life. In the age of Kali, they are not properly protected and therefore, the duration of life of the present generation has shortened considerably. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, stated that when the women become unchaste for want of proper protection, there are unwanted children called Varna Shankara. To insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life. Dushasan, a brother of Duryodhan, insulted Draupadi, an ideal chaste lady, and therefore, the miscreants died untimely. These are some of the stringent laws of the Lord mentioned above. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Anything you would like to share from this? So, um, I think in, in this uh, purport, Prabhupada is explaining that um, how uh, the Kaurava 
party. Um, they had done so many um, injustices against the Pandavas and, um, and they had usurped, usurped the kingdom of Maharaj Yudhishthir. And because they had um, broken so, so many laws and taken the side of Adharma, um, they ultimately lost the battle and um, the Pandavas were victorious. And then in the purport, um, Prabhupada goes to explain, I think what's very nicely Prabhupada has put here, um, that how uh, protection is offered uh, to different sections of the society. Um, and uh, each section, um, what important roles it plays. So Prabhupada talks about the Varnashram system, starting with the Brahmanas, how when the Brahmanas are protected, they can distribute uh, Vedic knowledge among the society. Um, the next Prabhupada talks about, which is something we know is very uh, close to Prabhupada, is cow protection. Um, how by protecting the cows, um, we, we can get milk, that milk, uh, you know, we, we can nourish society with so much milk, so much milk products that we all use. Um, and then Prabhupada talks about uh, importance of protection for women uh, and importance of protection of children. Um, so I think in this way, uh, one, one point I'd heard in the devotees lecture is um, the modern society is based on uh, exploitation. Um, everybody is looking for an opportunity to how they can exploit and uh, get benefit from other people. But how Prabhupada has so nicely put in this purport that you know, that some sections of the society you know, who are more vulnerable instead of exploiting them, when, when they are offered protection, protection. It gives so much in return in benefit to the society by protecting the brahmanas, the cows, the women, and the children. Um, and then Prabhupada goes to explain in the last paragraph um, that about uh, Varna Shankara. So when when Arjun was offering reasons uh, to Lord Krishna to why he does not want to fight the battle, one of the reasons he had offered uh, was uh, if I if I were to kill so many people then uh, you know, the women would be un would be not be protected. There would, there would be nobody to protect the women. And um, if there were nobody would protect them, then a lot of people would take advantage of it. And uh, unwanted children called Varna Shankara would be born and the society would be polluted. Um, and that's what Prabhupada is saying that um, because Dushasan also um, you know, insulted Draupadi uh, uh, in the presence of other uh, Kaurava family members, Guru family members, um, and they they took part in this adharma. That is why they had to suffer defeat in this battle. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Puji, for reading and for sharing um, and explaining. Beautiful. So, other devotees can also share if anybody would like to share any points. Couple of things I wanted to mention here. So, Prabhupada mentions. <clears throat> about all these and then in the end here he says killing the above mentioned innocent creatures is totally forbidden because even by insulting them one loses one duration of life so even insulting of any of them means <laughs> it is very much uh, going to have severely negative consequences so whether it's a brahmana, it's a cow, it's any women, any lady, uh, even children, they have to be protected, not insulted. And old men, of course, Prabhupada mentions in the Bhagavad Gita also, even verbal fight should not be given to those who are senior in age. So <clears throat> like that, Prabhupada is mentioning that there's no question of killing and disrespecting. So this shows how much respect, you know, cows, women have in Vedic culture. The other thing Prabhupada mentions here, children, protection of child does not begin after birth, but it <laughs> begins after <clears throat> protection begins from the day of begetting the child by the purificatory process of Karbodhan Sanskara. So <clears throat> one has to do Karbodhan Sanskara, then one has to <clears throat> plan for conception. And the first part is to do Garbodhan Sanskara, then conceive. And after that, you are just uh, protecting the child. So there's no question of abortion uh, <clears throat> because that means basically killing. So <clears throat> Prabhupada very nicely is giving the details here for each one. So here seems like everybody has to be protected 
Brahmanas have to be protected, cows, women, children, old men. Uh, Kshatriyas are the ones who are <laughs> expected to provide all this protection and make sure this protection is going on. So Kshatriyas are actually serving in this way. They are, <laughs> it's their duty. And here, that is why <laughs> we wanted uh, Kshatriyas like Yudhishthir Maharaj, Arjun, Bhima, who can actually do this. And that's the reason why uh, Lord Krishna <laughs> had supported the uh, side of Arjun during the battlefield. And Lord Krishna did not go away that, oh, okay, no, 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 fighting is bad. I will not participate. No, Kshatriyas are needed for all this purpose. Who will do this? So if Kshatriyas are not following the scriptures, then this very important service will not be done. And this day and age, we can see how the, this aspect is so much in problem. We don't have proper protection for cows. Don't have proper protection for women. So many problems happening to the women. We don't have proper protection for children. And <clears throat> uh, who can do all this protection? Kshatriyas can do. So we don't have, in fact, those who are in the garb of government posing themselves to be the leaders of the different countries. Many of them are actually worse than Shudras and they are <clears throat> actually uh, causing more problems to the society. Like, for example, <clears throat> some of the countries or some of the uh, leaders in some countries like China and, you know, so many other North Korea and, uh, you know, Afghanistan. And <clears throat> there are no proper rules or proper uh, government who can do protection. So what is happening? They are actually exploiting. Uh, they are <clears throat> making the people get exploited. The <clears throat> uh, Brahmanas are not allowed to spread Krishna consciousness in most of these countries. Then, you know, cows all obviously is, get, is getting slaughtered all over the world. <clears throat> no protection for the cow. Women, they are being tortured and, you know, misled. And in China, they are having uh, <clears throat> such a bad situation that uh, <clears throat> the government is making their own men go and live with the, the uh, ladies who may be following a different faith and they are you know uh, uh, abusing and violating their chastity so all these things are happening according to the arrangement of the government just imagine and then children so many places the children are not being protected different parts of the world you will see uh, in some countries like cambodia and other places the people they are selling their own child own children and the children are sexually being abused happening so many places. It's like horrible <clears throat> to even hear such a thing. So we can see so many examples. Old men, people are just taking an opportunity wherever old people are there, they're going and <laughs> looting. Thieves are there and everyone. Uh, why? Because the leaders are not very strong, powerful, religious, and therefore all these problems are happening. Uh, but if we see the example of Yudhishthir Maharaj, there was not such problem, R Lord Ramachandra. In fact, they were so powerful. See, if the government really wants to do something, they can do. That is how it was. They were not worried on, on, on how many votes they will get. They were not worried about showing some success only short term for five years. They were totally having the faith by the whole society everybody was supporting them and they were planning things which are going to give help to the society 10 years 20 years 30 years down the line they were planning in that way and they were simply having um, one thing in goal that is to rule according to scriptures and to please the Lord and devotees like that. So this is how Parikshit Maharaj will read about him also in coming chapters. 
Yudhishthir Maharaj, these great kings were living. So therefore, Prabhupada used to say that democracy, he used to say demon crazy. So <laughs> democracy is unfortunately the <clears throat> default setting at this point. You know that, oh, we think our oh, democracy is the only way. But uh, it's the only way because the true Vedic <clears throat> culture is not prevalent. If that would have been prevalent, then there wouldn't have been any problem like this. And we can see, you know, some of the Gulf countries, their rulers, uh, if they are genuinely wanting to do service to the, to the kingdom, to their people, they come up with laws, they come up with rules, and then everybody follows and things go smoothly. And nobody uh, objects or says anything. And everybody is actually having positive things to say about them. So this is, uh, you know, very uh, uh, helpful example to see how things could be very smooth, even when we had kings in the past. And now, of course, this Kali Yuga, previously it was spiritually more advanced. Uh, people were there. And then the Brahmans were there always guiding <coughs> the Kshatriyas. So Kshatriyas were not uh, expected to, you know, <coughs> do everything by themselves. They also see needed spiritual guidance. And for that, uh, the Brahmans, they were there. They had the knowledge of the scriptures and they were living simple life. So it is not that Brahmans were enticing the Kshatriyas to uh, give them the wealth. No. Uh, they were trained to have a very simple life. So when Brahmans have simple life, they don't need anything from the <coughs> Kshatriya. They can uh, uh, tell the Kshatriyas that this is the right thing, this is the wrong thing, uh, openly. They don't have to be <laughs> thinking, Are, if I tell this, then he will not pay me money. So those fears were not there. Okay, anybody else would like to share anything? Okay, nobody? So it's making Thanks, sense, Prabhuji. whatever we're discussing? Yes, Prabhuji. Thanks for explaining. Okay, I think we're close to nine o'clock. So maybe we can conclude for today. And then we'll get together tomorrow. And we'll read 1.8.6. Anybody wants to make any final points before we conclude? Okay, so we'll end it here and we'll chant 11 times Hare Krishna Mahamantra, praying for all the living entities. Thank you everybody for participating.